I know one of the challenges we hear from some clients is really getting employees engaged and involved in the program. Have you all kind of leveraged your policies, your training, the certifications, communications, whatever it happens to be to really get that engagement with employees and be found things that specifically work well as part of that process? I can, if, I, if I can start here, we had um, some really great training, some video bursts, we call them, um, about a year or so ago, which people were following and it followed a particular person as they went through a process of, they were, you know, they went to jail for specific subjects. And it was really great where we had so much engagement. People were, were just talking about it and saying, what's next to this person? And every single time those bursts would come out, we'd end up getting uh, more questions going directly to our boxes, more inquiries that were going to our hotline regarding questions. So it really, it kind of put a name to the face. You know, people, People don't recognize, they'll say, oh, but that's what's done here. We, we, we do certain things where we are. And despite the fact that you train them, they'll say, oh, well, that's what you're talking about because they're so used to doing those things. So I think that, that that type of engagements where they got to see it face to face in interaction, like happening like a little soap opera. And I think they were each about maybe two to five minutes. Um, we sent those out and they really did really put a name to the face. And I mean, there was a lot of commentary because it was almost like Facebook in it where people were allowed to sit there and make comments underneath it, like, oh, I see what he's doing next. And it, it really was really a great source. I mean, it, it was really great for us. Uh, we actually stopped doing it uh, right before March, 2020, to sort of changed the messaging uh, related to particular subjects, but it, it was something that we'll probably restart, you know, uh, pretty soon because it was just a great following. So we've done something similar to what Karen's describing. I, I think has really helped our engagement. We're, we're trying to be more uh, timely with our messaging. So for example, as we were leading up to um, last year's political season, we teamed up with our external affairs and our government uh, government group to do a, a, a political do's and don'ts, uh, for example, and certainly gets at, at con potential conflicts. Uh, we're you know, being based in the Washington area. You know, we have employees who may be sort of um, lending their expertise to political campaigns and other things. And so we wanted to encourage people to make sure that they disclose those activities and, um, and, and generally they were um, uh, authorized. Um, you know, we've done video shorts, uh, like Karen described, trying to introduce humor. I think as I've been in this role longer, one of the things I've come to learn is, you know, you think of the code of conduct and conflicts of interest as being very serious, weighty topics, which they are, um, but for to sort of reach people and grab their attention when you're competing with so many other uh, things, it helps to use humor and short uh, short bits of information. And you know, we recently did what we're we're calling a, a series we have now called Code Clarity, where we have these like small uh, parts. We'll we'll put something on our uh, internal website, and we've included videos now. We're embedding videos, and we did one recently about outside employment. Um, and I know I think this may be something we'll may all dress a little bit later in this uh, uh, episode uh, of this uh, engagement, um, but it was around the pandemic. We saw so many more people having secondary employment. And so we thought it'd be helpful to provide some thoughtfulness and guidance around, you know, reporting secondary employment and disclosing it and, you know, uh, submitting a disclosure form. Um, uh, so yeah, we're doing a lot of, I think what, you know, sort of Karen has described and we're, we're seeing a lot of traffic. We're seeing a lot of hits when we put those uh, shorts up. Um, so that's been uh, beneficial for our program. And I think the other big way, the consistent, constant way is we have an annual code of conduct training um, that will cover conflicts of interest. And we always see a big spike in disclosures right after that period of time when that, that, uh, that training is taken. Yeah, at Northwell, we, we do something a little similar as well. Um, in, in a non-COVID year, we actually create a lot of our own training. Um, so I even starred in a conflict of interest video where I was the... Uh, the sales rep trying to uh, sneak in and give some gifts and things away that was uh, that was against our policies, and I got thrown out of this thrown out of the out of the facility. So that was a lot of fun, and uh, got a lot of the attention. Uh, this year, because of COVID, we we purchased a really cute video um, with these little kids talking about conflicts of interest, and that gets rolled out in our annual training. Um, and the uh, employees can really relate to that, um, either the little kids or or they like seeing me in the videos. Um, so those are always a big hit. We also roll out our annual disclosure form for those uh, employees who have to complete it at the same time as our annual training. Um, so we track those together. 
um, and it, it's mandatory that they do both for those people that are required to do it. So um, that way we ensure it gets done. And similarly, we do get more hits. Once our training gets launched the next that quarter, our helpline really gets a lot of inquiry. So it's, it's really great to show that, uh, to demonstrate the effectiveness of, of the training that way.